All right, I am all over the place mentally today, so forgive me if this video seems a little herky jerk. So, it's BD. Today, we are going to be talking about the what happens at different rates of strain for soft tissue and how that can relate to penis enlargement. But before I get into it, I have a Patreon where you can support me. I basically do a curation post of all my posts on Reddit once or twice a month, so that way you can easily find it. Then, I sell supplements at leviathansupps.com and now on Amazon. This is Vigor. Me and my partner Hank formulated it for best bang for your results, stimulant free pre-workout. So I think it competes well with other higher end supplements and I think it's worth your time and money, but no pressure. Uh, let's see, then I have peak male physique for penis allergic aids that are not needed but can help. So, a little bit of a background. I'm working on refining my penis enlargement theories. Uh, originally, I was just looking to see what happens during the healing response and figuring out ways we could speed it up. But, and some of the research that I was looking at even said collagen-based soft tissues are not very well researched because they take so damn long to heal. Therefore, these studies go on for years. At a, not always years, but you know, long times for a study. So it is hard to gauge the efficacy of some of this stuff, and therefore it is not well researched. In that time, I found a paper that talks about the rate of elongation of a tissue and how that affects its adaptation response to it. That is very useful for us because what we're trying to do is get the adaptation response chronically to continuously grow our penis. Um, and if you didn't see my last video, essentially, I now think the most important thing that we need to do is make the tunica albuginea bigger to see uh, macro improvements to penis size over one inch. Because essentially, the tunica is a very stiff tube or sausage casing. You can only shove so much meat into it until it is full, so we need to make that casing bigger. And since it is a relatively robust connective tissue in the body, we need to make sure we can get as big as possible to continue seeing gains. So essentially, if we can ensure that you're doing enough stimulus during your sessions, we can mark off one reason why you are not gaining. Furthermore, we can make sure that you will gain in the future and we can optimize our routines to better fit the new science. I guess it's not even that new. 2015, eh, whatever. First, we need to define what strain is and it's pretty fucking simple, <laughs> okay? So, it comes down to stretched length minus original all over original. And this will give you probably a decimal. It should, if not, that's insane. Anyway, <laughs> so let's say you stretch to six inches. Your original length was five. That would be one over five. So the strain rate was 20% plus one. So 100 or 1.2, 120%. Yes, I know I started to ramble at the end there, but based off of that, once you find your strain rate, you can then compare it to a stress strain curve chart and then see what would probably happen at this uh, strain level. Now, it is much more complex when you get into actual materials because you need to know it's at failure point and all that. Uh, someone's modulus where it's basically the slope of the original line. I'm not going to get into that for this video. And quite frankly, I don't really understand it that well. But the research I used for this had definitive numbers. So we're just going to base it off of the percentage strain rate and what I found in this research paper. Or, yeah. Yeah. So quick tangent. The paper that I was reading through for most of this pointed out to me that a tendon is half as strong as steel. So that means one square centimeter of a tendon can hold. What was it? 500 to 1,000 kilograms, and for us Americans, that is 1,100 to 2,200 pounds before it snaps. So, the tunica, albeit much thinner than your typical tendon, 
is made up of the exact same tissue, collagen fibrils, and it's organized in a similar fashion. So it's reasonable to assume that it is just as strong, if not stronger, per uh, gram. And it also seems stupid strong for its purpose, right? It's only supposed to hold back about four HG of blood pressure during an erection. And from the research I saw, it can hold upwards of 50 HG. So it is very over-engineered. But anyway, on a normal day, your body will, or your ligaments and tendons in your body will receive about 100 to 102% stress, depending if you weight lift or not. If you weight lift, it's obviously going to be much more. So that range of stretch will not result in any changes in size or strength of that tissue. So we have this chart. It's actually not too bad for a line where we have strain and then stress on the tissue. So we have stress. I'm just going to write like that. I hope you can see those. Um, if not, I'll fix it in post. Essentially, it goes something like or here. Let's see. This is your everyday stress otherwise known as the toe region. I don't know why they call it toe, but here you won't see any physical change. Then as we continue to go up this chart, there will be a point where we reach failure. And I'll just mark that here. So that would actually happen <laughs> because if the chart breaks, not the chart, if the tissue snaps, obviously it can't hold any more weight. So this is about 100, 102, then 104 to 108 is where we would see the stress adaptation response. This is the range we want to be in. Now, anything over 108 to a more likely 110% elongation would lead to failure of the tissue causing uh, irreparable damage or injury. And then as you continuously get higher up this curve, it will can fully rupture. My chart is not 100% accurate, by the way. <laughs> so this is the range we want to be in by the end of our session, preferably for about half of our session. Okay, now at 104%, this is when you'll start seeing these microscopic failures in the collagen fibers because what happens is, is these collagen fibers I already have to erase this to explain, but it's not like it was pretty. You know what? I'll probably just boop it up on a picture, but these collagen fibers, collagen when relaxed is like this, squiggly, crimpled up, not taking up much space and not handling any load. But when we put it under load, it elongates. And when we put it on more load than it can handle, it stretches beyond the point of return and then it stays elongated. This starts at 104%. And then after you go up to say 108, 110%, it snaps. So you'll have a broken piece of collagen. Um, obviously it's not gonna be very effective for load handling. Now, as the strain continues, your tissue also begins to just relax because the stress is taking its toll on it. So you need, it will eventually get weaker and weaker. And if it wasn't obvious, going above 108% to 
elongation is stupid and should be avoided. So basically there's a window where we will see changes in the collagen fibrils that are beneficial to strength and size, but too little, nothing will happen too much. You'll just hurt yourself. Another thing when we put stress on our tissues in general, we will see two things. First is stress softening. And that's basically as the tissue breaks down, it relaxes and that's going to make the tissue softer. But over time, it will begin to contract back to its normal shape. This happens in rubbers. It also happens in connective tissues. And then as we continuously elongate it, there will be a point where it will not be able to return to its original shape. This is deformation. Deformation does happen in collagen and stuff and stuff. Deformation does happen in, in soft tissues. However, our body is able to heal. So we need to keep that in mind when we're talking about this stuff. Basically what we're trying to do is continuously cause deformation and then heal from that deformation to make that the new normal length instead of the broken down length. Um, a point on the soft tissue, the, the stress softening, that's going to be what your temporary gains are. So for length, if you're doing length, you'll see a slight increase in length after your sessions. And then for girth, you'll see probably a more dramatic increase in temporary girth, but your erections will be softer, not necessarily because of your erection quality, but just because that tissue is broken down. Now, another important thing to know is that as we continuously stretch the tissue, it becomes easier and easier to hit the 104% elongation. So basically after 10 times of doing it, we can get longer with less weight. So if this is our baseline here, the second set, you'll be able to get it faster without weight because if this is 104% right here, you seeing it? Okay. So this is 104%. The load we need is going to be less each time to reach this elongation. And after say your 10th time, it will be reproducible, meaning that this will be what will be for the rest of the session. And at a certain point that will become just your natural baseline. So what does this mean for us? First of all, repetitive strain seems to be highly beneficial in the beginning because we need to hit this as our constant uh, strain rate. So that means the more often we stretch, the faster we will get here. But that does not mean we need to stretch as long. And after your four to six months, you'll probably want to actually switch back over to our typical PE stuff where we do longer sessions all at once because we are at this point, we need more work to continuously see the degradation of the tunica albuginea. There is clear evidence that overwork is possible as laid out with the stress strain curve. So if your elongation changes, your load changes, that also means that that point will continuously get lower and lower each time. So if you are doing 20 pounds, seven days a week for two hours, eventually you'll see a macroscopic rupture, which would then lead to scar tissue and fibrosis. So it, we can point out where it actually is an issue. What I'm basically saying is there's a Goldilocks range that we need to stick into with the 104 to 108%. Um, going beyond 108%, even if you can get to 8% is stupid because of the macroscopic failures causing the fibrosis. This also suggests there is a point where there is too much time per session, but that is yet to be determined. Personally, I've seen great success with only one hour a day of any kind of work with no drop in erection quality. So it's probably around there, but I'm only speaking for myself. And then we've seen that more sets equals more stretch because of uh, that, you know, doop, doop, doop. That's not perfect, but you get what I mean. 
that as we continuously stretch it, the more cycles we do of the stretching, the easier it is to elongate. On top of that, I saw in another research study that uh, 30 seconds of a stretch, static stretching when you're trying to touch your toes, for example, leads to the same response as 45 seconds when it comes to elongation. Meanwhile, 15% was only 80% elongation. So what that means for my beginners doing manuals, you probably do not want to be doing stretches longer than 30 seconds and just doing more sets. And I'll have to update my beginner's routine again. But, and for my more advanced guys, that means we want to be taking more sets in that time period. So if we have a vacuum hanger that does one, one hour set, he's going to see a much greater benefit doing six 10 minute sets because this breakdown primarily happens at the point of load. So the more times you put load under the tissue or wait, so the more times you put load on the tissue, the more likely it is you're going to see these microscopic breakdowns of the collagen fibrils that we are going for. We should be comparing our stretch flaccid length to our post stretched flaccid length to make sure that we're reaching the prime elongation. And that is not important for your first six months. For my beginners, as long as you are stretching it enough, just if you feel a slight discomfort, you will grow. I can almost guarantee it. But after you get to like six months where we need to fine tune it a little bit more, that's when you need to pay attention to this stuff. So if your penis is six inches long, stretched flaccid, your target length uh, mid-session and right after should be about six and a quarter to six and a third, which would be 104 to 106. Um, trying to stretch to six and a half inches, which would be about 109% stretch flaccid, would be the absolute max. And it probably won't have better gains than 104, but also bigger issues. And this is anecdotal. I have never stretched beyond 106% uh, flaccid. So when I was tracking it last year, uh, it was about eight and a half inches. I was able to get up to about like nine, 9.1 stretched. And yeah, it was very painful to get up to that amount to 106%. So keep that in mind. Obviously you guys might have more loose tissues to start so you'd be able to hit it easier. But for me, anything above 105%. Now for girth, the same principle would apply except it would be very difficult to track with edema. But if you are inclined, you need to limit edema. So you can do that by adding malleability exercises before all of your girth sessions. Limit your pumping sets to five minutes and try not to go beyond 30 minutes in the tube. Clampers really won't have this issue, but you can get some skin inflammation that you need to take account. What I have been playing around with to limit edema is micro sets of two minutes uh, pumping. At seven to 10 HD, you would not need to be this high to start. So you pump up to seven to 10, hold it for two minutes, release it, and then immediately pump back up to the target uh, range. Do this for 10 minutes, take a big break, repeat two to three times. And the, another benefit is it does not require you to be erect the entire time because you're constantly pulling that tissue tight. I can probably better explain that in another video. So to track it, you're going to want to take your erect mid shaft girth without the use of a cock ring, barring that you have good EQ that day. And this should be at max arousal. And then you want to compare it to your post uh, expansion from the pump with a cock ring on without edema or what your size is while clamped. So for example, if you are six inches around girth wise, congratulations, but you would want to be about six and a quarter to six and a third when uh, fully engorged by the end of your session. And you need the cock ring because it would make it much easier to completely push out the tunica, therefore showing the maximum amount of elongation of the, oh, what's the word, latitudinal bands of the tunica albuginia. This research paper now also shows that all day stretchers for elongation will not really do anything unless they're going to be on 104% elongation. However, the amount of time that most people wear all day stretchers will lead to too much work as work is force 
apply times time. So, like I've been saying for probably a year and a half now, you do not need to be wearing any extender for more than four hours and any hanger for more than a hour. An all day stretcher is essentially just a shitty extender. So keep that in mind. And finally, heat really fucking complicates this. So as it will, and then finally, heat really fucking complicates this as it literally melts the collagen fibrils once they get above 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So that increases their ability to stretch. And then the heat itself is definitely some form of strain, but how does that calculate into elongation? I'm not sure. And that also would change the stress curve, right? But anyway, that's something I would have to look into more on my own. I know there's a big thing called hanging with fire on Thunder's Place. Yeah, it probably is helpful, but I need to look at it on my own and not let someone else's uh, preconceived thoughts muddy my own. If that makes sense, I'm not trying to sound like an egotistical ass, but I'd rather go into it blind and then come to my own assumptions than starting with someone else's assumptions and then mimicking them. Anyway. Okay. So, that was probably a big old mess. I'll see in the post. But, uh, if you like what I do, Patreon, Leviathan Suffs, if you want to support me another way. Peak Mel Physique, if you want to support me another way. I don't get paid for this that well on YouTube, so that's a good way to help me out. Uh, 